off we go. And welcome to the demonstration of your van. What I'll do first is I'll do the outside of the vehicle, show you everything on the outside, then we'll go inside and do the technical stuff inside. So on the outside, we're going to start in the driver's compartment. The first compartment we need to deal with is your onboard LPG. All you need to do is go to a petrol station that actually sells it and the instructions are on the glass point away from the normal fuel. However, take that point off, inside there it's like a normal fire hydrant, connect it onto the two nipples, turn it clockwise to lock it into position. It will give you a reading of how much gas you've got left in your compartment only when the vehicle is running. Next compartment is your 230 power supply giving you all your electrics into the vehicle running off to the campsite doing what you need to do. To the left of that on your yellow sign is your gas emergency control. You as a customer should never need to go under that vehicle to switch it off. As long as you switch all the appliances off inside the vehicle and the master switch that's all you're entitled to do. Even when you go on the ferry in the Euro tunnel you do not need to go underneath the van to control it. To the left of that is one point where you can fill up your fresh water. Like a whale on a caravan system, inside the bag there you've got your fresh water. You'll probably never use that one, you'll use the other one I'm about to show you now. To the left of that you've got where you can fill your fresh water up with a normal hose. Put the hose inside there, fill it up, once it is full it will come back out the same hole or on the bottom, on the overflow pipe, it will come out of there. What I'm saying is, you'll never, ever, ever flood the vehicle. To the left of that is where you've got your 12 volt adapter and your aerial sockets, both TV and satellite, that you can draw from your pitch into the vehicle. Underneath that, while traveling, they're hooked up on the Jubilee clips, both of them, when you're static and using the van. Blue one for your fresh water, Gray for your dirty water at the end of every holiday turn it drain it and leave it open until the next time you're going to use it point to note do not forget to put them up when traveling above that is your toilet compartment on a lockable key so nobody can get in there and pinch it however once you're starting and using it again lift up the blue handle and bring it out if it doesn't come out that easy, please don't be forceful and try and break it open. It's because you've left the toilet open inside and I'll show you that once we get inside. Please keep that locked at all times. More and more customers are coming back ordering new ones because they are getting pinched. That's the driver's side done. Now onto the rear of the vehicle. One of your two awnings on the back. I'll show you how to operate that later on in the demonstration. Underneath that, you've got your reverse camera. I'll show you underneath uh, to use that inside and your rear doors to get in. You always have to open your right hand side first, come inside to the handle and open your left hand side. Nice steps to go in and out of the vehicle and then you've got your rear access into the vehicle. At the moment, we've got it down so as if you were using the bed while the vehicle was static. I'll do one side, but both sides are exactly the same. When you want to put the bed away so you can get more storage in there, you'll do it like so. I'm going to demonstrate it on the left hand side. Take the inner mattress off first, fold them up and place it to the rear behind the netting. You'll then fold it over, lift it up, feed it through, lock it off and you'll do the same on both sides. Your centre poles then lift out and you can place them along the floor like the carpets are in there now. Also on the right hand side you've got your external outside shower point. Brand new in the carrier bag there. All we simply do is take it out, it's on the off position you can turn it all the way around to the left so you can get hot water or bring it back over to the right so you've got cold water and it just gives you an access point to wash off shoes, bikes or whatever you want to do on the rear of the vehicle. On the left hand side you've got your three pin plug for electrics outside the vehicle and as you can see underneath we've got four different holes that we can do various stuff in. On the left hand side is a large storage, I'll open it and then you can see with the camera and inside there you've got some of your uh, brand new cushions and other storages inside there. Forward left, 
It's just a small hole that you can put other niceties in. Forward right is another little one. And rear right is where your hot water container is. So that is where you're storing all your hot water for your showers and washing the dishes. Hopefully you can see on the camera as well, on top you've got a yellow handle to drain your hot water. Turn it to the nine o'clock position. And if you see under the rear of the vehicle, you can see your hot water dropping out of the vehicle. Remember to shut it back off when you're filling it back up. Otherwise, it's going to keep all in through at all times. <coughs> also on the top of the bed, I'm not going to get in there and climb over the bed now, but you've got overhead storages for storage inside there as well. A speaker in the rear, another three pin plug on the top left and a USB port for charging as well. Slightly above that, you've got your on and off for more lighting in and around the vehicle, and especially on the back. If I switch it back off now, it goes off. That's the rear of the vehicle. Moving on around to the passenger side, first compartment we come to is your external gas barbecue. So you can bring your George Foreman's and so on with you. You don't have to bring spare gas, it's connected to the gas already supplied to the vehicle. Nice large awning along the top, the second one, again, normal, bring it out. Please remember, do not use it on windy uh, days as it will damage the awning itself. Last but not least, on the driver's side, just remember your diesel filler cap is on the passenger side and underneath that is your ab blue. What do you need to do to it? Absolutely nothing. All it does is helps the admissions of your engine. It will tell you what to do or tell you when to change it and top it up. On the dashboard, a warning light will come on. That's the outside of the vehicle. Now we're going to move to the inside of the vehicle.